sign up for a year and pay less than 71 pesos per month. Visit tmt.ph slash digital to get your free 30 days of the Manila Times Digital Edition. We are optimistic about the direction our industry is going amid the pandemic. Since the beginning, we have proven that we are resilient as a community. And we, together with the government, the private sector, and other stakeholders, are able to work collaboratively to accomplish our goals. This year has brought us to unexpectedly tough battles at sea. Some dreams have been cancelled and hope has somehow remained stranded. Yet despite these pressing times, we continue to serve with sea of opportunities. We continue to break barriers. We continue to cross the boundaries. and we continue to sail forward. Year 1960, when the selfless service and commitment were initiated by the master seafarer, mariner and visionary, the late Captain Gregorio S. Oca. It was 60 years ago when Captain Oca established the Associated Marine Officers and Seamen's Union of the Philippines to champion the welfare and rights of the Filipino seafarers around the globe. In the six decades since its inception, AMSUP has grown to become the largest seafarers union in the country, receiving various recognitions in the Philippines and beyond. Anchored in its mission to serve the Filipino seafarers all over the world, AMUSUP continues to labor to fight for the social, legal, and moral rights of its members. The organization continues to envision the expansion of health benefits among the members and their families throughout the archipelago through the Siemens Hospital. Aside from the non-stop modernization program of the hospitals in Cebu, Iloilo, Davao, Dagupan, and Manila, AMSUP continues to provide the well-deserved social and legal benefits among its members through the Provident Fund, Welfare and Mutual Benefit Plan, AMSUP Legal Services, Siemens Village, Slop Chess and Sailor's Home. The organization continues to improve not only the services they provide, but also improves the abilities and talents of our seafarers and cadets through the Amazon Seamen's Training Centers and the Maritime Academy of Asia and the Pacific. We pay homage to the seafarers who continue to embark on the high seas to provide for their families and to move the world's economy despite the daunting challenges brought about by the pandemic. The world may have stopped, but your work continues. You, our dear Filipino seafarers, remain our heroes amid the pandemic. 60 years is more than just a number. It is indeed the face of every Filipino seafarer over the years. 60 years may have been full of accomplishments of unstoppable commitment and services. But more than the achievements is your story. Stories that are more worthy than diamonds and gold combined. To our members and all the seafarers across the world, we at Amosup appreciate and value you. We are grateful for you and the work you do, your hard work and sacrifice. As we reach our 60th year since our founder, Captain Gregorio Oca, established Amusuk, we still uphold our mission to serve you and to champion your rights and welfare. 
Nais ko rin magpasalamat sa ating mga magdalaga, sa ating mga membro. Napakalaking tulong po dahil sa galingin ninyo ay tayo ngayon ang palaging hinahanap ng mga ship owners at uh, ating mga social partners. Let us pledge that we will continue giving the best that we can to ensure that Amosuk will continue to grow and uh, continue to develop and continue to uh, ensure that our economy and the nation will improve. We are more than an organization. We are family. Our commitment to you continues beyond our mission and vision. May we all come out stronger and sail forward in hope and solidarity after this adversity. Dito sa Amosuk, walang humpay ang pagkilala at pasasalamat sa bawat marinero at marinerang Pilipino. Mabuhay ang Pilipinong mandaragat. Ang inyong kwento ang nagpapatibay sa ating organisasyon. Ang inyong tagumpay ay aming inspirasyon. Kayo ang Amosuk. Happy, happy 60th Anniversary, Associated Marine Officers and Simmons Union of the Philippines. Isang malaking pagkilala at pasasalamat sa bawat Pilipinong mandaragat. Welcome to North Port. Located in the port area in Tanda districts of Manila, Philippines facing the Manila Bay, this 53-hectare facility is the largest and the premier domestic shipping gateway to the country, catering to vessels servicing the provinces in Visayas and Mindanao. In 2010, North Port commenced commercial operations at Manila North Harbor, embarking on its plans and programs to transform the existing port into a premier and modern port, providing efficient, reliable, and effective cargo handling and passenger terminal services. Situated at the north end, the key facilities in this terminal are the berth space for ship-to-shore crane operation and container yard. With eight key cranes currently, and a length of 840 meters, the key crane area can accommodate six to seven vessels on dock. It can move 20 containers per hour per crane, and a vessel stays on an average of 16 hours at birth. This terminal also caters to self-sustaining vessels with built-in crane or ramp and handles a combination of containerized and brake bulk cargo, ranging from cars, heavy equipment, iron and steel products, to other types of general cargo. The container yard was rehabilitated to fit the growing volume of containerized cargo. It has ATEU capacity of up to 28,000 including 192 slots reefer plug-in area. We have invested heavily to acquire modern equipment and state-of-the-art technology to ensure Northport's continued ability to provide superior cargo handling services. Just meters from the quayside is the Operations Center 1, which houses the people who are working together to keep the terminal running smoothly. It consolidates all shipping lines and the PPA satellite office to give our clients a comfortable and safe area to conveniently process transactions. The first stop of trucks is at the Terminal 1 in gate, composed of five lanes, or Terminal 2 in gate, composed of three lanes. Six of these lanes serves also as waybridges to cater to the mandatory weighing of outbound containers. To enter the terminal, a container must have a pre-advise or release order, which is being processed by shipping line in our web-based system. Once the transaction is complete, the truck exits at Terminal 1 out gate. Around 2,000 trucks visit the terminal each day with an average into-out stay of less than an hour. On the north side of the terminal is the passenger terminal complex. Opened in 2013, it can accommodate 2 to 3 million passengers a year. It features x-ray scanning area, luggage check-in area, and has about 2,000 seating capacity.
This is Northport. We are committed to transform and lead the port industry in volumes, productivity, and provide end-to-end -end logistics solutions. Our online business forum today uh, has been titled Sea Power, the Game Changer. Now it's time to chart the, the course for Sea Power, the Game Changer, with our first keynote speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Robert and Petra. Uh, so I'm going to present a, um, a, a brief uh, that was taken out from the Maritime Industry Development Plan 2028. This is a collaboration uh, between the marina and the stakeholders, and they came out with uh, what are really the problems as far as our uh, domestic uh, shipping uh, industry is concerned. So these are the current challenges facing the domestic shipping industry right now. And, and you can see here that the core problem is uh, the inefficiency of domestic sea transport system in the country. This is, this is very sad, uh, considering that we are an archipelagic nation, as you said a while ago, and we have 7,600 islands. And... Um, uh, to have an inefficient transport system is not, is not good for uh, the economy uh, because if you have better in a, or efficient transport system in the maritime sector, then uh, uh, the prices of commodities should go down if we have this. And uh, we found out that there are, uh, what are the causes of the problem or what uh, causes the core problem of inefficiency in the domestic sea transport system. Uh, one, is that uh, the, the presence of aging fleet. Um, so our, our ships are old and um, uh, it's not modernized. Uh, so it only shows the capacity of our domestic trade uh, players uh, to provide new ships. So this is one of the problems. Um, uh, we have uh, very old ships in the inventory of our domestic trade. The second problem is the lack of incentive and attractive financing scheme for stakeholders. Uh, you know, uh, some of our ship owners are getting loans from, from foreign countries instead of getting loans from, uh, from our bank here in the country. So, uh, so they, they really need the financial support uh, because when you, when you build ships, you know, you require a lot of funding and um, they don't get that much incentive from, um, from our country. And so they get uh, their funds, uh, their, their loans from other countries. So that's another problem. And then another problem is the passenger traffic and port congestion. Um, I think the issue here is we, we, uh, we fail to provide uh, additional routes that will reduce the congestion of a uh, port as far as our domestic ship is concerned. And uh, not only that, the, when the ship goes to port, the problem is the infrastructure, the land, infras land infrastructure, wherein uh, the van or the container or the cargoes are uh, moved from one place to the other. So that's another problem. And then, of course, uh, the, the other one is the weak regulatory and supervisory uh, services, uh, which is the a burden of the government agencies. Uh, so we came up with a 10-year maritime industry development plan on how to address uh, the inefficiency of the domestic ship. Uh, these are um, the uh, strategic um, plans that, that need to be addressed. The first one is the modernization and upgrading of domestic vessels. Um, of course, we have aging fleets, so we need to modernize them so that uh, you, you give uh, good services to our commuters. Uh, and then the other one is um, how do we provide incentive and financial assistance to stakeholders? Of course, route rationalization in congested ports. Um, uh, this should be a uh, study or a uh, solution that needs to be um, discussed by the government agencies like uh, PPA maritime in the maritime sector, uh, PPA Philippine Coast Guard, um, and also the, the stakeholders, the ship owners themselves or the players. 
And then, of course, the improvement of regulatory services um, as far as the government agencies are concerned, and this is what we are doing um, in, in the past, and uh, we will continue to improve our regulatory services um, in a way to provide a good incentive to our uh, domestic players or uh, the owners of the ship. And then uh, for our way forward, um, we should be able to provide other incentives such as uh, the following. Uh, we will try to amend the RA 9295, restoring the 12% uh, VAT exemption on importation of ships. Uh, and then the amendment of train law exempting the domestic shipping companies on the excise tax of their fuel consumed by stakeholders during its operation. Because you know that 50% of the operational costs of our domestic shippers are uh, is uh, fuel. So, ang mahal ng kanilang fuel. So, alaki ng gastos nila pagdating sa operational costs and uh, when there are uh, increases in the prices of fuel, affected sila. So, um, I hope that uh, we will be able to uh, uh, push for the removal of the excise stock as far as fuel is concerned for our domestic ship. And then, uh, you know that the president already uh, signed the Public Service, Service Act allowing 100% uh, ownership from foreign to serve our domestic trade. Um, na approved na ito, but um, we will use this as an opportunity for our domestic ship player to uh, be competitive. Uh, what we are going to do is to uh, come up with the IRR. Uh, for example, the IRR, uh, wherein um, the foreign players, uh, when, they, when they serve our domestic trade, they should be registered uh, with the Philippine flag. Meaning, uh, when they are coming here, the crew will be manned by uh, Filipino sea seafarers. So it's an opportunity. You generate employment, employment for our seafarers. And, and if they are registered with our Philippine flag, whenever they are going to undergo repair, it should, they should re do the repair in our shipyard. So you uh, increase the profit, profitability of our shipbuilding capability or domestic shipbuilding in our country. You generate employment, and while they are here in the country doing some repairs, um, they uh, get their logistics uh, in, our, in the domestic market. So it, it's really good for our country. At the same time, we should come up with incentive to our domestic players so that they can uh, compete with the uh, foreign uh, ship owners that will be uh, serving our domestic trade. So we will use the PSA as uh, an opportunity and advantage uh, instead of uh, thinking that PSA is not will will uh, uh, put a dent on the um, profitability of our domestic ship owners and then of course the vessel retirement replacement program we need to act on this to avoid our ship uh, aging in the future so we we came up with a policy uh, to uh, on, on this effect uh, i believe that uh, a, bribe, a vibrant maritime industry anchored on highly competitive domestic shipping industry bodes well to the economic progress of our country. Let me introduce you, all of you now, to our second speaker. Attorney Maria Asuncion Himping de los Santos is presently the Port Operations and Services Department, Man Department Manager of the Philippine Ports Authority or the PPA. So my presentation for today covers four major aspects of uh, PPA's uh, mandate that would be PPA's operations in the new normal, its uh, policies and issuances, uh, the safety, health, and uh, travel uh, protocols in place, and PPA's digital initiatives. Since the Duterte administration uh, took charge um, on June 30, 2016, uh, the PPA, through the leadership of our uh, GM, Attorney Jay Santiago and DOTR Secretary Arthur P. Tugade uh, was able to complete a total of 245 seaport development and improvement projects worth uh, $19.87 billion. Uh, these ports form part of the 585 port projects completed under the Build, Build, Bid program of the current administration. Um, before his term ends in um, 44 days, uh, the president, uh, together with UTR and PPA, are set to inaugurate at least 14 more completed port projects. 
The remaining days of this administration are fo now focused on further streamlining systems and procedures to, to achieve seamless interconnectivity, not only of the ports, but also its processes um, with the hope of uh, improving efficiency across all aspects of PPA operations. In the last two years, uh, PPA managed to sustain an interrupted provision of board services through policies, programs, activities, and initiatives all aimed at um, facilitating um, maritime trade to improve port processes, procedures, facilities, and infra, ensuring avail availability of competent and qualified port service providers, and providing healthy and safe uh, work environment for port users, port stakeholders, and port workers. PPA likewise uh, released several policies and significant issuances to further promote efficient port management. And among this would be the inter internet-based port operations and resetting for terminals uh, system or the iPorts, which allows a complete and secure online transaction on vessel arrivals and berthing documentations, manifest and payment of port charges through a payment gateway, bank-to-bank uh, -bank or uh, cash modes. We have um, also implemented the online processing of port charges exemption on export warfates for PESA registered company at the Manila International Container Terminal. Um, the system automates the processing and approvals of exemptions on export warfage. We have also streamlined uh, processing of private port applications for energy-related projects in compliance with the Republic Act 11234 or an act um, establishing the energy virtual one-stop shop for purposes of streamlining the permitting process of power generation transmission and to establish procedures in the processing of private port applications of energy-related projects to ensure efficient and effective delivery of service to the public through the electronic application and processing system compliant with the EVOS Act. Uh, PIPA is part of its uh, COVID-19 initiatives, also implemented safety, health, and travel protocols based on guidelines approved by IATF to prevent the spread of infection within PPA supervised and managed sports and the surrounding communities. Among the initiatives implemented um, along this line would be the on the implementation of safety seal certification in ports, uh, wherein um, all port facilities um, uh, establishments, private establishments within the ports are required to comply uh, with the safety seal um, uh, guidelines to ensure the public that the establishments are compliant with the minimum public health standards and are uh, safe for use. As we all know, COVID-19 has um, changed the landscape on how we transact our business and, and at the same time, I think, affected our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, operations. Uh, to help our partners in the industry, PPA implemented some measures to mitigate the effects of the pandemic. And this would include uh, the extension of rental and concession fee for uh, payments um, for 30 day or a 30-day grace period in rental dues and concessions uh, during the ECQ um, without incurring interest, penalties, fees, and charges. We also have, um, we also adopted the waiver of PTD fees and rural terminal fees and reduction of port charges for locally stranded individuals, vehicles, and other vessels under, under the Hatid Tolong program. We have granted financial assistance to critically impacted maritime sector under RA 11494 through waiver of the cage and layup fees for domestic ships and uh, waiver of uh, RT-PCR testing fee for returning Filipino seafarers. The Malasakit help this in our uh, in our uh, ports continue to be uh, active in providing assistance to passengers uh, during the pandemic. To further facilitate trade and fast-track transactions, um, transaction time with the agency, PPA can continuously take advantage of the digital platform through the promotion of e-commerce, digitalization, and electronic system. PPA is currently working on the following. The review of existing work processes and development of online electronic system for other processes that have not been um, um, digitized yet. Uh, the development of guidelines on further promotion of e-commerce, digital communication to include the use of electronic signature and online transactions so as to limit human contact to a minimum. 
we are continuously conducting um, review of existing electronic systems, procedures, and guidelines for further improvement. So on way forward, um, we can say that despite the difficult times, PPA ports have succeeded to stay open to cargo and uh, passenger operations. We, uh, despite the constraints and the limitations, uh, we are able to have a culture of readiness and flex flexibility in terms of the ability of management to change and modify corporate policies, regulations, and frameworks and systems to contend with the changes and needed responses during the pandemic. Uh, electronic commerce and data exchange, uh, acceleration of the digitalization will be uh, the top priority and the new normal as uh, going paperless is the trend. As physical contact between people needs to be minimized, electronic submission and paper transaction will eventually be mandatory in um, most all, all transactions. PP ports um, will continue to be operational and uh, all services in place, guaranteeing complete functionality of supply chains and at the same time, mindful of the health and safety board personnel and its users. Let's give a warm welcome to Dan Fernand. The Togo Group is truly the largest integrated logistics and transportation provider within the, within the country. Um, our various business units within, within Togo Group has uh, capabilities in uh, transport and uh, delivery, starting with uh, shipping. Uh, we have uh, about nine ships now. Most of them are uh, passenger ships. We have a uh, cold chain product. So we carry refrigerated containers. Uh, we have uh, multi-modal transport. So we can do, apart from the uh, full containers, we can do uh, less than container loads. And then we also have uh, air freight, uh, whether dry or uh, refrigerated. We can do uh, last mile. Right, uh, direct to direct to businesses, direct to stores, direct to uh, consumers, and in fact, we also have our uh, full network of stores. So we have our company-owned stores uh, in the malls. You would see a uh, to-go store that's ready to accept uh, parcels, boxes, and then we have a very extensive uh, set of agents that uh, that. Uh, Apart from selling the, 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 the freight product, the express products, uh, it, they, they also sell travel. In terms of inventory management and, dis and distribution solution uh, cap capabilities, we have warehouses, hubs, uh, naturally container yards. Uh, we can do val value-added uh, solutions like uh, kitting, bundling, assembly. And then uh, finally, uh, Togo even has a distribution arm. So we distribute uh, milk products, dairy products, direct to uh, direct to pharmacies, uh, stores, and uh, food uh, sir, food services. So Togo is a leading asset owner. Um, that's why we're able to deliver, um, again, an integrated uh, logistics and transport uh, solution. I... I've talked a lot about uh, I've talked a lot about enabling businesses, and this is what the Togo Group uh, does. We operate a, a large fleet of transportation vehicles, and that enables business activity across our archipelago. So, if you if you look at it, if you're a um, uh, starting up your company, uh, you have a product. You want them to to uh, to send samples out. Uh, to go has you. We 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 can bring parcels. We can bring parcels with your samples. We can bring boxes. As your business uh, progresses, becomes becomes bigger. You're probably then shipping uh, more and more boxes. Uh, we can handle that through our uh, LCL business. Um, as it as it even becomes more, then you're probably shipping pallets, and then suddenly you're shipping containers as you as you mature through your business cycle. So to go is there with all the relevant assets, with all the relevant expertise uh, in a in a single company that uh, that that actually helps businesses uh, achieve their own goals or or makes them win in their own uh, markets. We're the only operator in the Philippines of the large roll-on, roll-off passenger uh, ships uh, that allows us to provide day-definite, lead-time-specific connectivity from Manila to the key base ports, uh, to the key out 
outports in Visayas and Mindanao. So these are the key or the major economic hubs. Um, a apart from uh, connectivity into uh, into Cebu, Iloilo, Bacolod, Cagayan, Cagayan de Oro, we also call uh, um, up-and-coming cities. Uh, we have calls to Samis, Butuan, Dipolo, Puerto Princesa, Coron, Dumaguete. Uh, we also call uh, Davao and uh, General Santos. What we're able to do with uh, by operating this very unique and differentiated product is we're able to provide companies, uh, fast-moving consumer good companies, your small, medium-scale enterprises, a very definite lead time. And if you give a very definite lead, lead time, it means that their goods are available in Visayas and Mindanao uh, in the right assortment, in the right quantity uh, at the right time. So they're at the store shelves uh, for their own customers to be able to buy, thereby allowing uh, to ghost customers to win in the market. Um, it's uh, differentiated in the sense that it's uh, pretty fast uh, com com compared to typical freighter services and even uh, compared to um, another alternative mode which you would probably heard heard of is the uh, roll-on-roll -roll of trucks. These are the trucks that goes through the eastern seaboard or passes down through to Batangas Panay to reach uh, Visayas and uh, Mindanao. In fact, if you think about it, these are uh, roll trucks because of our roll on roll off capabilities. They're 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 actually even uh, loading with uh, to go out of uh, out of Manila and out of uh, Batangas. Why is it important to provide day definite uh, lead time specific connections? Uh, most importantly, for agricultural produce. Uh, food security is a key thing for our for our country. Another um, big thing that we do because our ship is a roll-on-roll roll -roll roll of passenger ship is that uh, we have travel as uh, one of our key products. So um, upper uh, right-hand side of the slide, you see this uh, Philippine Travel Survey Report uh, done by the Department of Tourism and the Asian Institute of Management. They did this way back in 2020, but the, the findings are valid. Um, the question they had was, once travel restrictions are lifted, how soon do you think you will be you will be traveling, and that is specific to domestic travelers. So they had about 12,000 12, respondents across 81 provinces, uh, mostly within the ages of 20, 22 to 40, uh, mostly college graduates, mostly from the private sectors with a certain level of uh, disposable income. Um, and 70% actually expect to travel within the six months of lifting of restrictions lifting of restrictions and the availability of vaccines. So there's a lot of pent up demand that we see from, uh, that we see from travel. So, so preparing that, uh, we continue to improve our travel, uh, travel product. Uh, we're offering, uh, we're offering the ability to host events on board. So if you have meetings, uh, incentive, uh, in, in, incentive events for, for your sales teams, conferences, exhibits, uh, you're able to uh, perform this on board. And then while you're on board the ship, uh, we've uh, improved it by having uh, Wi-Fi, uh, by having more retail, uh, more more retail options so you can shop you can shop you can have uh, more food uh, choices and then we we can even uh, uh, host uh, concerts on board movies uh, music and then something for 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 the, for the kids um, it's a key economic enabler because uh, travel feeds into tourism and we know tourism has a certain degree of ec of economic multiplier while we're doing that, we're ensuring the safety and welfare of our crew and crew and passengers. All of our crew is vaccinated. We comply very strictly with uh, local government, national government pro protocol. So whatever the uh, latest pro protocol is, it is uh, it is uh, compliant to that. To go, it continues to invest in technology and transport infra infrastructure because we need to realize efficiencies and because we need to improve our environmental stewardship. Today, our last speaker, Mark 
Matthew Francisco Parco, the president of Philippine Liner Shipping Association. Thank you very much. I think people are always asking, what's the latest in shipping? So uh, this is just uh, to let you know what's, uh, what is the state of shipping right now, <laughs> comparing pre-COVID 2019 with the 2021 volumes. So clearly, uh, when you compare 2019 and 2021, there's still a very weak head haul, which is the outbound, which is Manila going south. It's uh, down by 13% against 2019. The inbound, which is uh, Visayas and Mindanao coming into Manila, has shown uh, greater strength. Uh, it's only 1% down. But uh, as a total, because the head haul is the, or the southbound, takes up most of the volume, uh, our total throughput is, is still down. Something that people don't remember is that shipping follows trade. So we, the economies of scale are achieved depending on the size of the trade. Right? Now, domestic ships are small because the trade is small. We don't carry much to, especially if you go to a smaller port like Ozamis or Iligan, they don't carry as much volume. The bigger ports for us are Cebu, Pigin de Oro, and Dapa. And the biggest ships in domestic trade will be there. Now, if we allow foreigners to come in, they will be facing the same problems we are facing, which is the economies of scale. So it doesn't matter whether we allow foreigners in, they will be facing the same problems which domestic shippers, uh, shipping lines face. For us to be able to be more cost effective, we have to get out of this thingy trade and consolidate. We have to have bigger volumes. Now, Domestic ship owners, uh, as you saw with uh, some of the presentations, are committed to the Philippine economy and we will buy ships that the trade needs. Uh, and we're ready to work with producers to find solutions to bring goods to market. Uh, one idea, of course, is clustering the industries. Uh, this is just for uh, feed mill and the hogs. So corn is produced in, vis in Vismin and it's shipped to Luzon to the feed mills where it's processed. Then it's shipped to the hog and poultry, poultry growing regions in Vismin. And then the final goods, which is the hog and poultry are shipped back to Luzon. So you ship it out three times. However, if you cluster and you have your corn production, your feed mill and hog uh, poultry growing areas in one area, then you don't have to ship it out. It's in the same location. That's what we mean by clustering. And what happens is you only ship out once when you, after, after you bring it to the slaughterhouse and after you, you pack it, then you can ship it out already as ship as a boxed meat to the cold chain in the, in the market. The way forward to us is to improve efficiency and reduce cost. So port infrastructure efficiency, better port facilities, adequate berthing, then regulatory efficiency, focus on regulation, regulations that improve safety and improve efficiency and reduce redundancy. Improve, well, the, the third one, I don't know how feasible this is with the high debt of the Philippines, but in other countries, they do subsidize shipping. And then last is, of course, to increase scale. We are optimistic about the direction our industry is going amid the pandemic. Since the beginning, we have proven that we are resilient as a community. And we, together with the government, the private sector, and other stakeholders, are able to work collaboratively to accomplish our goals. This year has brought us to unexpectedly tough battles at sea. Some dreams have been cancelled and hope has somehow remained stranded. Yet despite these pressing times, we continue to serve with sea of opportunities. We continue to break barriers. We continue to cross the boundaries. and we continue to sail forward. Year 1960, when the selfless service and commitment were initiated by the master seafarer, 
mariner and visionary, the late Captain Gregorio S. Oca. It was 60 years ago when Captain Oca established the Associated Marine Officers and Seamen's Union of the Philippines to champion the welfare and rights of the Filipino seafarers around the globe. In the six decades since its inception, AMSUP has grown to become the largest seafarers union in the country, receiving various recognitions in the Philippines and beyond. Anchored in its mission to serve the Filipino seafarers all over the world, AMSUP continues to labor to fight for the social, legal, and moral rights of its members. The organization continues to envision the expansion of health benefits among the members and their families throughout the archipelago through the Siemens Hospital. Aside from the non-stop modernization program of the hospitals in Cebu, Iloilo, Davao, Dagupan, and Manila, AMSUP continues to provide the well-deserved social and legal benefits among its members through the Provident Fund, Welfare and Mutual Benefit Plan, AMSUP Legal Services, Siemens Village, Slop Chest, and Sailor's Home. The organization continues to improve not only the services they provide, but also improves the abilities and talents of our seafarers and cadets through the Amazon Siemens Training Centers and the Maritime Academy of Asia and the Pacific. We pay homage to the seafarers who continue to embark on the high seas to provide for their families and to move the world's economy, despite the daunting challenges brought about by the pandemic. The world may have stopped, but your work continues. You. Our dear Filipino seafarers remain our heroes amid the pandemic. 60 years is more than just a number. It is indeed the face of every Filipino seafarer over the years. 60 years may have been full of accomplishments of unstoppable commitment and services. But more than the achievements is your story. Stories that are more worthy than diamonds and gold combined. To our members and all the seafarers across the world, we at Amosup appreciate and value you. We are grateful for you and the work you do, your hard work and sacrifice. As we reach our 60th year since our founder, Captain Gregorio Oca, established Amosup, we still uphold our mission to serve you and to champion your rights and welfare. Nais ko rin magpasalamat sa ating mga magdalaga, sa ating mga membro. Napakalaking tulong po dahil sa galingin ninyo ay tayo ngayon ang palaging hinahanap ng mga ship owners at uh, ating mga social partners. Let us pledge that we will continue giving the best that we can to ensure that Amosuk will continue to grow and uh, continue to develop and continue to uh, ensure that our economy and the nation will improve. We are more than an organization. We are family. Our commitment to you continues beyond our mission and vision. May we all come out stronger and sail forward in hope and solidarity after this adversity. Dito sa Amosuk, walang humpay ang pagkilala at pasasalamat sa bawat marinero at marinerang Pilipino. Mabuhay ang Pilipinong mandaragat. Ang inyong kwento ang nagpapatibay sa ating organisasyon. Ang inyong tagumpay ay aming inspirasyon. Kayo ang Amusuk. Happy, happy 60th Anniversary Associated Marine Officers and Siemens Union of the Philippines. Isang malaking pagkilala at pasasalamat sa bawat Pilipinong mandaragat. Welcome to Northport. 
Located in the port area in Tanda districts of Manila, Philippines facing the Manila Bay, this 53-hectare facility is the largest and the premier domestic shipping gateway to the country, catering to vessels servicing the provinces in Visayas and Mindanao. In 2010, Northport commenced commercial operations at Manila North Harbor, embarking on its plans and programs to transform the existing port into a premier and modern port, providing efficient, reliable, and effective cargo handling and passenger terminal services. Situated at the north end, the key facilities in this terminal are the berth space for ship-to-shore crane operation and container yard. With eight key cranes currently, and a length of 840 meters, the key crane area can accommodate six to seven vessels on dock. It can move 20 containers per hour per crane, and a vessel stays on an average of 16 hours at berth. This terminal also caters to self-sustaining vessels with built-in crane or ramp and handles a combination of containerized and brake bulk cargo, ranging from cars, heavy equipment, iron and steel products, to other types of general cargo. The container yard was rehabilitated to fit the growing volume of containerized cargo. It has a TEU capacity of up to 28,000 including 192 slots reefer plug-in area. We have invested heavily to acquire modern equipment and state-of-the-art technology to ensure Northport's continued ability to provide superior cargo handling services. Just meters from the key side is the Operations Center 1, which houses the people who are working together to keep the terminal running smoothly. It consolidates all shipping lines and the PPA satellite office to give our clients a comfortable and safe area to conveniently process transactions. The first stop of trucks is at the Terminal 1 in gate, composed of five lanes, or Terminal 2 in gate, composed of three lanes. Six of these lanes serves also as waybridges to cater to the mandatory weighing of outbound containers. To enter the terminal, a container must have a pre-advise or release order, which is being processed by shipping line in our web-based system. Once the transaction is complete, the truck exits at Terminal 1 out gate. Around 2,000 trucks visit the terminal each day with an average into-out stay of less than an hour. On the north side of the terminal is the passenger terminal complex. Opened in 2013, it can accommodate 2 to 3 million passengers a year. It features x-ray scanning area, luggage check-in area, and has about 2,000 seating capacity. This is North Port. We are committed to transform and lead the port industry in volumes, productivity, and provide end-to-end -end logistics solutions. Sign up for a year and pay less than 71 pesos per month. Visit tmt.ph digital to get your free 30 days of the Manila Times Digital Edition.